in this platform itself we will develop the we will design the web pages and here this post.com platform is providing lot of out of box functionalities so this out of box functionalities is nothing but already some predefined functionalities are the given by the post.com platform by default so with configuration settings according to our requirements we will do some configuration settings and we can achieve this functionalities so for this we no need to write any code already built in standard mechanism is there so we will use that and we can achieve the things in the salesforce so here it is providing lot of out of box functionalities like workflows reports dashboards we call these things if you want to achieve these things in any other technology we have to write some lines of code we have to write a thousand hundred lines of code or two hundred lines of code here we no need to write any code for this to achieve these functionalities just with configuration we can achieve that so here it is providing the platform for post.com platform salesforce is providing one flow platform that is called post.com platform in this post.com platform itself we will create the data model in this platform itself we will develop the business logic here only we will design the web pages everything we will do in this post.com platform so here and in this to develop the business logic they introduced one programming language called apex programming language here also in this salesforce business logic they introduced one new markup language they introduced one new programming language that is apex programming language so here the apex programming language syntax is similar to java c dot net c c plus plus so here apex programming is a object oriented programming language and here to create the web pages they given one markup language called visual post markup language these are the two languages they introduced apex programming and visual post markup language apex programming is to develop the business logic visual post markup language html in html we will have tags the similar way in visual post also we will have some tags uh, are you aware of uh, html tags hello is it like dot html at the end or yeah we will save the file with dot html so in that we will use the tags like this each and every open tag we will close it okay. the similar way even in java also we have the java server pages jsp the similar with the syntax of this visual post markup language is similar to this html tags and here this platform is providing some lot of out of box functionalities like reports dashboards workflows etc and here by using this salesforce crm we can develop the mvc applications here mvc means model view controller so by using this we can also develop the mvc applications so here model is nothing but here in this post.com platform itself we are going to maintain the data usually if you are working on any other platform we will install one separate software for database like oracle in oracle we will create some tables to maintain the data employee table department table like we will create some tables but here we will create the objects yet the terminology is different in oracle terminology we are calling as tables here we are calling as custom objects so these custom objects will comes under the model and here to design the web pages we are using visual post markup language 
So this visual post markup language will come under the view part, and in the source dot com platform, we are using FX programming language to develop the business logic. So that will comes under the controller. So how to create this account for us in Salesforce? We will see. Before that, we will discuss what are the things we are going to discuss. So like. Syllabus kind of thing. So in this, we have two parts: administration and development. In Salesforce.com, we have the two parts: administration and development. Whatever the concepts we will see under this administration, all these things we will achieve some configuration settings. We no need to do any coding kind of thing here. The only thing here we have to do is some configuration. With that configuration, we can achieve the functionalities. No need of coding in this administration part. Next one is development. Under development, you will see Apex programming language and Visual Force markup language. So here, whatever the things we are seeing under administration, all these are we can achieve with configuration. Whatever the things we are developing by using this development, that's it. That is nothing but customization. We will do the customization with the help of this Apex Visual Force Markup language. So configuration and customization. These are the two things will be available. Next. After completion of this, we can apply for different roles, different role of jobs. After completion of this, you can apply for different roles of jobs. Like if you want to go as administration, you can get the jobs as a administration administrator. If you want to go as a Salesforce developer, you can go as a Salesforce developer and Salesforce business analyst. That is your interest. Which one you want to decide? After completion of this, you can choose. Maybe if you are seeing like opportunities are more on this or on this, or otherwise if you are interested on this, whatever. Like these are the different kinds of jobs will be available. Like admin, Salesforce administrator, Salesforce developer, Salesforce business and next administrator, administration and development. So under administration, we will see these concepts like how to create the custom objects, how we will create the tabs for those objects, how to create the applications, how to insert the records into the custom objects. In Oracle, we will create the relationship between the tables. Like for example, employee and department is two tables. We will create some relationship between those two tables. Like primary key relationship, foreign key relationship. The similar way here also we will create the relationship between the objects. And what are the types of relationships are there? Here we have different relationships. We will discuss one by one. Once we started, next schema builder. It's a tool. By using this tool also, we can create the objects. Creating the custom fields, like for example, if we take employee as an object, there we will be able to see employee name, employee number, commission, HRA, salary, assistant number. Like those are nothing but custom fields, field sets, and creating formula fields, roll up summary fields, validation rules. Here, nothing but validation rules. So, for example, if you are logging into your Gmail account, you will enter username and password. Maybe if you are typing some mistake in the password or username, it will display some error to us, like invalid username and password. That means it is validating the username and password which we are providing to the in the text fields, like whatever the username and password we are entering. That it is. Checking in the backend, 
If it is correct, then it is fine. Otherwise, it will display the error message. So, to do that type of things, here we will use validation rules. Triggers, this will come under the development. Workflows, under workflows, we will able to see different types of actions. Email alerts, field update, task assignment, like that. And in Oracle database, we will use SQL queries. Your SQL queries are you are able to retrieve the data from the other way in this Salesforce they introduced two query languages. One is SOQL, another one is SOSL. Here SOQL means Salesforce object query language. By using this Salesforce object query language, search language. So these are the two types of query languages they introduced in this Salesforce. And how to perform these operations. All these things we can see once we start. Next, import wizard. Here import wizard is one tool. At a time if you want to insert thousands of records into the object. For example, in Oracle what we will do is, for example in Oracle, we have the table. For example, the query in Oracle. Insert into employee, like we will insert the records by using some queries. But here we don't need to write any queries in this Salesforce. Not required any queries. Any queries to insert the records. So by using this import wizard tool, we can insert the records. We have to execute this query number of times. But in Salesforce, if you want to insert queries by using this import wizard at a time we can insert thousands of records. Lots of records at a time. We can insert lots of records at a time. We can update the reports creation. Again under reports, different types of reports will be there. Tabular report, matrix, summary, join, like different types of reports will be there. Dashboards, creating roles, profiles, users creation, permission sets, sharing rules, OWD settings, data storage, like, like whatever we will see here, till this, all these concepts are all these concepts will come under the administration only. Whatever the things now we discussed here, all these things, administration part. We no need to write even single line of code for that. All these things we can achieve with configuration. Next is development. Under development, we will see the basics of this FX programming language. What is FX? How to use Visual Force markup language, triggers, classes, oops concepts, what are the data types available here, how to use conditional statements, control statements in this FX programming, how to write the SQL queries and SVSL queries inside the FX programming, how to perform the DML operations using FX programming. Like these are the things we will see under the FX.
still see how to create the visual post pages. What are the tags usage? Like the tags usage and uh, how to use JavaScript in these visual post pages. How we can use the static resources in the visual post pages. The completion of this will start the development. Even the development also, first we'll see we'll see the basics of Apex. After that, we'll see the visual post. So after completion of this, we will see how we will develop the application in the real time. Like where we will develop that. In sandbox environment, we will develop that. So like how log into the sandbox environment. In the real time, we will work in the sandbox environment. How it looks like and how to create that sandbox. How we will do the migration of the metadata components from one environment to another environment. All these things we will see one by one. First administration, next development, under development, effects programming and visual force. After that, sandbox creation and production where we will develop, deploy our application. That's like we will see one by one. So here we have the administration part. Next one is development. Under development, we will see effects and visual force. So whatever we discuss here, almost the concepts will come under cover covers and for developer 401 training. Developer 401 training. Just a second. Hello? Yeah. So, uh, did you get some idea whatever I discussed till now? Do you have any doubts? Anyone is having any doubts whatever we discussed till now? No. No. Uh, no. Thank you. Okay. At least uh, you are getting something, right? When I am saying explaining all these things? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So whatever we will discuss, those all will come, all these concepts will cover for this developer 401 training. After completion of this training, we will able to give the certification, Salesforce okay. developer 401 certification. And we will also give some assignment and we will give some case studies to you people. So you will do the practice for those. So after completion of some concepts, I will give some assignments. So you will do the assignments on daily basis. And I will also share some dumps for this certification. Salesforce 401 certification dumps. You can refer those dumps how the questions are coming, in which format they are asking the questions. Like it's a reference. I can't say all the questions come 
will come from these terms only, but it's kind of a reference to you people. Getting. So like that. So any doubts you have here? Whatever we discussed till now. Priya, quick question. Uh, yeah. You said certification. It's only for the developer, or can we do certification for administrator as well? Yeah, it will also covers admin also, but uh, only the few, uh, like uh, around fifty to sixty percent will cover for admin. Okay. Okay, but for developer you can give it directly. For admin it will covers fifty to sixty percent. Okay. If you want for reference, I will also share the terms for admin two on also, but. Those are for reference only. Okay, uh, don't okay. like prepare only those things and give give the exam. Like it's a kind of different. Yeah. So basically, for developer, it's only for admin. Yeah. Okay. 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 So which one we want to give? First we will decide and we will appear for that exam only. Sure. So like that. So do you have any doubts? Any other doubts? Guys, any questions? Everybody is able to follow. Lobsang, Linna, yeah. so, Parvesh, Raghuvir, Revanth, Shravanti. Yeah. So far, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, so far, yes. Good. Yes, so. so, if you want to see the syllabus, like we can also see that. So for developers, first they will give the 401 certification. After completion of 401, we will able to give the 501 certification. So 401 is mandatory if anyone is planning to give 501 certification. In the similar way, even in the administrators, the administrators also, if they want to give to 301, 201 is mandatory. So like these two are basic. First we have to complete this. For if I want to go as a developer, so first better to complete this dev one, and after getting some experience, we'll give the five one certification. But for this five one certification, first we need to complete this dev one, dev four one, like that. If you see here, here it is displaying the concepts, whatever will comes under the certification. So, like how to create the validation rules, OWD settings. Yeah, your screen is struck, you know, we don't see anything. We would just see a desktop. Yeah. Okay. One second. I will share it again. Please.
Okay, what about now? Nope, still the same thing. I see the notepad uh, syllabus where uh, Apex data loader is stuck over there. Okay. I just removed the um, presenter access I am giving you again. Just check now. Yeah. Okay, you should have got the present request now. Yes. And can you open now? Just we can see desktop. Just just desktop now. Yeah, I opened one site. See, we can take site I opened. We cannot see anything. We cannot see anything. It says waiting to view Krishna Priya's screen. See, I think uh, you should. Yeah, I think I can see now. What about others? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got it too. No, I can't see. I, it still says uh, waiting to view Krishna Priya screen. See. It went out again. <laughs> yeah, I can only see the desktop too. Is it fine now? Yeah. Okay. Like Everybody can see it? Phone. I still yeah. haven't I, got it. No, I, I cannot see it. I cannot see it either. I can see your private. You have a chat that app. I can see your chat. Okay. okay. I think yeah, I, now I can see. I, I, I can see your desktop now. Yeah, now I can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. 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 Okay, Krishna. Uh, we can uh, we can start. So I think yeah. So I'll send yeah. them the content of what we're going to cover. Okay. So yeah, you can start with the class. Okay. So now we will start the development concepts. Here we need to create one account in the Salesforce. So how to create that account is? So we'll see how to create one account for this. We'll go to this developer.post.com. So we have to create one account for us here. So to do all these examples, we have to create one free account for us. Like in our Gmail, we will have our own Gmail account. So we will be able to send emails. Right. The similar way, we have to create one account for us. See, in Gmail, each and every one will have individual accounts, right? Yes. The similar way, here also to practice these things, we need an account for us. So how to create that account? I am showing you here. So go to this developer.salesforce.com site. Here, click on login. If you have the login credentials, like already if we created the account, if we have the username and password, then we will click on login button. Now we want to create, newly we want to create the new account. We want to create new account. So after coming to this developer.salesforce.com site, first time we are going to create the account for us. So here click on sign up button. After clicking the sign up button, here we will provide the name, like first name, last name, like we will enter the details here, first name, last name. Here we have to enter our personal Gmail ID, so like because why, because once we click on the sign me up button, email will come to the whatever the personal email id we will give here 
select any one role. Here, enter some. Uh, do you want us to do it do this right now? No, just you follow this. Okay. After completion of this, you can do that, right? Okay. Now, if you follow, you will get some idea. Okay. So, after completion of this, you can create one account for you. And you can create company name, give some company name, any name. Any company name we can give. So, here we can select country. Some postal code will enter. Here username. Here username must and should be in the form of email ID. Username must and should be in the form of email ID. So like and giving some name. So username, we can give any name. Maybe see there are test.com something but it should be in the form of email address okay. you can give any name something whatever but it should be in the form of email id format that's it so i'm giving some username here check this check box click on sign me up so once we click on sign me up button, it is, uh, it is doing the sign up process. So if you see here, this username is already taken. So Your username must and should be unique. So finally we click on sign me up button. So once we click on sign me up button, it is checking for the unique name. So always username must and should be unique. And display the error message. I think it is not created yet. We'll see once. I'm going to create it. One second, I think I received the email. So if you see here, with the already existed name, I given it. So that's why it is displaying the other like registration error, duplicate username. After that, we change, we given another name, right? So if you see here, with this name, the account is created. Are you able to see this? Yes. Yes. So you will develop a login information. So this you will ask you to set the password when you first log in. So we are going to log in first time. So it will ask us to set the password. So we will enter the password. This is the way of creating account for us. 
is it clear how to create one account for us yes any doubts in there yes yeah. so here i have given the steps how to create the account so we have to go to this developer.salesforce.com site there we will yeah. click on the sign up button after clicking the sign up button we will enter all the details first name last name email id everything after while creating the account we will give our personal email id once we click on sign up button we will get the email notification to our gmail account like this your developer edition login information whatever the name we will give we will get the we will click on this link and we will set the password so this is the way of creating one account for us so is it clear yes 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 yeah. so like now our instance username is this one this is the username this is the username and this is the password now we have an account for us to practice all these things right like we created an account for us so now so whenever we want to create first time what we did we came to the uh, developer.salesforce.com url we clicked on it right so first time whenever we are creating an account for us we came to this site developer.salesforce.com and here we clicked on sign up button to create the account right now we have to login directly here we can click on the login button because now we created one account for us so next time onwards we will click on login button we will enter username and password and we will log into the environment come site directly we can open this login.salesforce.com site there we can enter our username and password and we can log into our environment clear hello yes yeah. yeah if you get any doubts you can ask me in the okay now username and password is this so next time onwards how to log into this is we can log in in two ways go to this site developer.force.com site here click on login button we can follow this way or another way is directly go to this site login.salesforce.com and enter the credentials both are same we can follow any one way and enter the credentials and log into our salesforce environment so here already we logged into our salesforce environment this one are you able to see the screen i think the screen is closed at least okay just a second I can see the screen, but I, I think it's closed or it's working a bit late. Um, too. Probably the weather, I guess. Okay. Uh, what about now? Thank you. 
question stuck there. It's stuck on that developer.salesforce.com. I can see that screen, but I think I think it's stuck in there. Okay. Okay. So, what about now? Hello? Uh, looks like we already logged in, right? Yeah. Here, uh, we are able to see this post.com tabs, accounts, contacts, opportunities. Are you able to see this? Yes, yeah. yeah. So now we logged into this account. So once we logged into this account, here if you see here, accounts, contacts, opportunities, like we are able to see some options. These are called tabs. By default, we will get all these tabs in each and every instance. Now I created this account. So in this, it is coming. If you create your other account, in this also, in your account also, you will get this setup. By default, Salesforce is providing some standard objects. So these are called standard objects. So if you see here, accounts, contacts, opportunities, contracts, orders, cases, all these are nothing but standard objects. So we will call all these, because all these we are getting by default. Right. So that's why we will call all these as Standard objects. So if you are creating our objects by our own, so here we have two types of objects. By default, we will get some objects, those are standard objects. These we will get by default. Next. The objects which we are going to create by our own, those are called custom objects. So how to create these custom objects? We will see. So in Oracle terminology, we will call those as tables. Here we are calling as objects. So, for example, in Oracle database, we will create some tables. Like department is one table, employee is one table. Like these are the tables. In Salesforce, the same we are calling as objects. Uh, Priya, it looks like the screen got stuck again. Again? Yeah. About now, I cannot see anything. It says waiting to view Krishna Priya's screen. I see a notepad. Okay, so in the notepad, you are able to see this employee department uh, names. Um, I see objects right now in the notepad. Yes. Thank you. 
Yeah. Are you able to see it now? Yes, now I can see. Now I see it. Okay. So in Oracle, we will create tables. In Oracle terminology, we will call it as tables. Like employee is a table, department is a table. Like we will call those as tables in Oracle terminology. But coming to this Salesforce, the terminology is different. We are calling as tables. Here in this Salesforce, we are calling as objects. In the table, in employee table, we will have some fields like this. Employee number, employee name, salary, commission. Like we will create some fields, some columns in the table, commission, like so and so. Whatever the fields we want to create, we can create. In a similar way, in Salesforce also we will create this. This employee number, employee name, here we will call it as custom fields. Salary, commission, the terminology is different. Here we are calling this as custom fields. Whatever the fields we are going to create by our own, those fields are called custom fields. Whatever the objects we are going to create by our own, those are called custom objects. Custom objects and custom fields. In the custom objects, we are going to create the custom fields. Clear? Any doubts? So you got one idea, right? In Oracle terminology, the, those are called tables. Here in Salesforce, those are called objects. The terminology is different. Next. So how to create those custom objects? I will show you. Okay. So are you able to see this notepad file? Yes. So here I given the steps how to create the custom objects. So here creating custom objects. So in our instance we will click on setup. Left side under build, create, click on the objects option. Once we click on the objects option, we will enter the object name, whatever the name we want to give. Like employee or student or department, whatever. We will give some name to that object and we will save it. So in Oracle we have to write the queries to create the tables. But here we no need to write any queries to create the tables. To create the objects we no need to write any queries. To insert the records also we no need to write any queries. These are the steps we have to follow to create the new custom object in our instance. So go to our Salesforce instance. Are you able to see the Salesforce instance now? Yes. Everyone? Yes. So here, left side, under build, click on this create. Here we have the option, objects. So click on this objects. Once we click on these objects, we will navigate to this page. Here we are able to see two buttons, new custom object and schema builder. So now we want to create, you know what we are going to create here? Custom object. Yes. So here we will click on this new custom object button. Once we click on that new custom object button, here it is asking to enter the object name. What is the object name we want to give? For example, we want to give the object name as employee. What is the plural label? Here, what is the whatever the name we will give in this plural label, this will be displayed as tab label. See, once now we are creating this object. After creating this object, we will create one tab for this. Like you see here, products tab solutions tab, cases tab, like for each and every object one tab is there, right? 
the similar way for our custom object also we are going to create one tab so here whatever the plural label we will give this label will be displayed as tab label clear did you get that what is the usage of plural label mm -hmm. see for example here i am giving employees 1 2 3 4 something after creating this object i will create one tab for this so here the tab label will be displayed as employees 1 2 3 4 4 5 tab so whatever we will give in this plural label this will be displayed as label for this object tab label see here case is tab or does tab like this right the similar way after creating this object we will create one tab for this at that time whatever the plural label we will be given here this will be displayed as tab label so now our employee tab label will be displayed as employees like that so we are giving the object name as employee some name we are given for plural label after that click on this save so once we click on this save see custom object is created are you able to see this yeah yeah so now the object is created object is created once the object is created by default Salesforce is giving some standard fields it is providing some standard fields those are created by last modified by employee name owner so these are the standard fields provided by the Salesforce see just now we created one object we given the object name as employee so once we create the custom object Salesforce is providing some standard fields one is created by last modified by owner what is the use we will see okay next employee name like these are the four fields I am giving the object name as department name department is my object for example in that object also it will create these four standard fields it will create the four fields here created by last modified by owner here in this name instead of employee name object name what is the object name we are giving here department right department so this field name will be department name clear Okay. An example, maybe if I'm creating, giving the object name as student. Mm -hmm. In this student object also, it will create these four standard fields, right? Here, instead of, so whatever the object name we are giving, here the field name will be the that one, student name. If we are giving the object name as employee, this field name will be employee name. If we are giving the object name as department department name if you are giving the object name as student student name so you are getting this right this field name will be the object field name clear yes any doubts here no so by default it is providing this standard fields these names are not changed here the, this is this will be the name depend on the object name if I give the object name as X then this field name will be the X name if I give the object name as Y then the ob this field name will be the Y name these three are same names no change in this this will be the object name this field name will be the object name, object name, first name, like this. If we give the object name as A, then A name, like that. 
So by default, once we create the object, now we created this employee object. Once creating this employee object, these standard fields are created. <coughs> So the similar way, if I create whatever the custom objects we will create, in all the objects by default, Salesforce will create some standard fields. If we want to create our own fields, like for example, in employee object, I want to create these fields, employee number, salary, designation, commission, email ID, SSN number, HRA, DA, shift elements, like if I want to create some custom fields. We will create these custom fields by our own. So whatever the fields we are going to create by our own, those fields are custom fields. So before going to create those custom fields, first we have to discuss what are the data types available here. So for example, Now, I'm, now, this is our object we created, employee. In employee, I want to create some fields like this. Employee number, salary, commission, SSN number. Like I will create some fields. So, in employee number, what is the value we are expecting? What kind of value we are expecting? Sorry? Hello? Miracle. In employee number field, which kind of value we are expecting? Numerical. Yes, we will yes, we will expect the value in the form of integer. That is nothing but number. We will expect the value like this, like hundred or one hundred something. Like this. This is correct. If, for example, if user is giving like this, maybe if user is giving employee number 120A, so this is wrong, right? Mm -hmm. Always employee number should be in the form of numbers only, not the characters. So here we have some data types. So for this field, we will give the data type as number. So if we give the data type as number, this field will allow the user to enter only special symbols it will display the error message. So like that. For example, SSN number, salary. Salary will also in the form of members only. Like 10,000 or 20,000. Like this. Like commission. Commission also, number only. SSN number. Here SSN number is also number. So, for example, if you see here, SSN number. Here, for example, the SSN number format will be like this. The format is like this. Here, we are giving all the numbers only, but here, hyphen is also there. So, but if you use the data type as number, it will be a problem. So here we have to give the data type as text. Like here we have some different data types. We will discuss those data types first. After that we will see how to create these fields. Like here we have different data types. Number, text, date, pick list. Like we have different kind of data types. Like we have different kind of data types. We will discuss these data types in the next session. Okay. So whatever we discussed till now, do you have any doubts? If you have any doubts, I will repeat those again. I will explain those. Hello? Probably we will get doubts when we try to practice. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, you do one thing, you try to create one account for you, okay? Okay. 
uh, I shown you in this in the today's class, right? By following that yeah. steps, create one account for you. Yes, everyone will create one account for you, so you can practice the examples in your in in steps. Okay, if you stop anywhere, yeah, I will you. help you in the tomorrow session. Okay. 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 Then. Yeah, I'll send you the class running notes. Uh, you know what all we discussed today in the class. I'll send you the class yeah. running notes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Priya. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Be careful.